بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وآله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد So we continue with the fifth chapter of the Quran Surah Al-Ma'idah and we're told that this chapter has 120 ayat verses and the meaning of its name, Al-Ma'idah, we're told that it is Al-Khiwanu aw al-Tawilatu yudaw alayha al-Ta'amu wal-Sharab So we're told that it is basically that table or that um, that structure that has food and drink placed on it for consumption وَالتُطْلَقُ الْمَائِدَةُ عَلَى الطَّعَامِ نَفْسِهِ We're also told that the word ma'ida is also used to refer to the actual food uh, that's to be consumed. So both the table as well as the food itself. وَسَبَبُ التَّسْمِيَتِهَا Why is it called الْمَائِدَةُ We're told إِنْفِرَادُ الصُورَةِ بِدِقِّ قِصَّةِ نُزُولِ الْمَائِدَةِ الَّتِي طَلَبَهَا الْحَوَّارِيُّونَ مِنْ عِيسَى عَلَيْهِ صَلَاةُ السَّلَامِ we're told it's because of the, 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 the story of when the Hawariyun, the disciples of Jesus, of Isa alayhi salatu wasalam, had asked for him to make dua to Allah Ta'ala that Allah Azza wa would bring down upon them this table with food and drink from heaven so that they would celebrate it and that it would be basically uh, Eid, it would be a, a, a holiday for them. This is the only place that this story is mentioned and because of that the uniqueness of it the whole chapter has taken its name after it and because the chapter itself the main objectives and what there are of subjects with it all of them are basically within what is being directed what is being uh, focused on within the chapter as a whole of Al-Ma'idah with regards to food and drink. Asma'uha. What are some of the other names of this chapter? Ishtuhirat bil Ma'idah. Wa tusamma Surat Al-Uqud. So it's famously known as Al-Ma'idah, but it's also known as Al-Uqud. Surat Al-Uqud meaning the chapter of contracts, the, con the, the chapter of oaths. Uh, also Surat Al-Munqidah the chapter of salvation, the chapter of rescue. وَسُورَةُ الْأَحْبَارِ And it is also known as the chapter of scholars. Al-Habr being singular, Ahbar being the plural. وَمَقْصَدُ الْعَامِ The general objective of this chapter is الرِّضَى وَالتَّسْلِيمُ بِأَحْكَامِ الشَّرْعِيَةِ الَّتِي فَرَضَهَا اللَّهُ تَعَالَى فِي السُورَةِ It is to have a sense of rida, uh, of satisfaction, as well as acceptance and surrendering to what Allah Ta'ala has placed of religious rulings and teachings within this chapter. So there's a lot of rules in it, and it is for the believer to accept them, to be happy with Allah Ta'ala's decrees and with his teachings, and to show that through devotion. Sababu nuzuliha. As far as its reason for being revealed, we're told that it's a Medinan surah. وَلَمْ يُنْقَلْ سَبَبٌ لِنُزُولِهَا جُمْلَةً وَاحِدًا We're not told that there's, we're told there's no known evidence for the whole of the chapter being revealed as it is. وَلَكِنْ صَحَّ لِبَعْضِ آيَاتِهَا سَبَبٌ نُزُولٍ But for some of the chapter, some of the verses, pardon me, some of the ayat, there are specific reasons and context and those, of course, are to be read and understood uh, through the tafsir of the chapter as a whole. What about fadluha, its virtues and merits? Well, we have two that are mentioned here. First is nazalat bi kayfiyatin faridatin li ahamiyatiha, that the chapter has come to specifically um, identify for us a particular major important matter that it's almost as though nowhere else has it been addressed. What exactly are we talking about? It's a hadith that Imam Ahmed has collected and it is a hadith that is sahih. Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhuma, he is the narrator and he says, قَالَ 
unzilet ale Resulillahi suratu ale Resulillahi sallallahu aleyhi ve sellem suratul maideh ve huve rakibun ale rahileti. He says that this is Abdullah ibn Umar radiyallahu anhu saying that Surat al-Ma'idah was revealed to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa it was sent down upon him while he was on his riding animal. فَلَمْ تَسْتَطِعْ أَنْ تَحْمِلَهُ فَنَزَلَ عَنْهَا Subhanallah, so this is that specialness, uh, uniqueness that is to tell you about the, the gravity of the matter at hand. So the heaviness that the camel felt by the Prophet والسلام, as he was receiving this chapter of the Qur'an, the camel could not hold him. And so the Messenger وسلم, stepped off the camel, got off the camel, and subhanAllah, an example of his compassion, and we know him to be وسلم, a mercy for all, and this is another one of those beautiful examples. Well, what about the second? So we're told that it is also from among those seven chapters. And by the way, you're going to hear this hadith being a, a virtue, a merit, until we finish with Surah Al-A'raf. So all of them are going to have that it is مَنْ أَخَذَ سَبْعَ الْأَوَّلْ مِنَ الْقُرْآنِ فَهُوَ حَبْرٌ That whoever is going to be able to maintain, to get, to contain, to have the first seven chapters of the Qur'an, then that person is a scholar. And of course, this doesn't mean to be able to just memorize, but it's to have studied it and to have really comprehended. And bidnillah ta'ala, that comprehension should be something that transforms the person's life. Well, the last point, munasaba tuham. And I want to just remind us, inshallah ta'ala, that when we're going through these you know, cards, which are meant to be very brief, a summary, for this aspect of the beginning of the chapter with the end of the chapter, it would be it would behoove all of us to really go back to each of these chapters and read it in the language we understand best, the Arabic, English, Urdu, Albanian, Turkish, whatever it is, Spanish, and see how the connection is really there. Because even with regards to the lesson that we're giving, we're not giving you an explanation of it. This is basically here to give you something of a brief synopsis and the hope is that we will go back on our own, inshallah ta'ala, and really give that attention so let's listen. We're told munasabatu awwali surati bi akhiriha. So the relationship between the beginning of the chapter and the end, al hadithu an al sidq fi al wafai bil uqudi wa aqibatu al sidq. So we're told that it's all about being truthful and being honest and fulfilling what you have of of covenants, of oaths, of contracts. And what the end result of truthfulness and of honesty is. فقال سبحانه وتعالى في فاتحتها يا أيها الذين آمنوا أوفوا بالعقود. Allah Taala began the chapter calling upon the believers, saying, "Oh, you have believed, fulfill your contracts, fulfill your oaths, fulfill your covenants." وقال في خاتمتها هَذَا يَوْمُ يَنْفَعُ الصَّادِقِينَ صِدْقُهُمْ And he concludes the chapter saying, this is the day that the truthful, the honest, benefited from their honesty, from their truthfulness. Subhanallah. Well, what about the relationship of this chapter, Surah Al-Ma'idah, with An-Nisa, the one that was just before it? We're told, اختتمت النساء بأحكام المواريث so Surah An-Nisa concluded with rulings dealing with heredity. And Surah Al-Ma'idah began with rulings for contracts and the likes. Both of these, inheritance as well as other types of contracts, all of these are from matters that deal at the level of society and the teachings that are there that help us to make sure that with regards to how we are interacting with each other, contracts, heredity, uh, all of these things that we are inshallah ta'ala fulfilling what Allah has given us of guidance and teaching so that not only is our personal and our familiar life in place, 
but society as a whole will also be in harmony and have structure. And Allah Azza wa Jal is all-knowing and knows best. وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد